Guys, guys, thank you so much for all the feedback I've been getting on this game. So it looks like we're going back to the basics. Uh, sh in as detailed as I am on video games, I totally missed this part, how to play. I should have looked at it instead of trying to hurry up and record a video right before the bedtime. Okay, so it looks like we got the controls here. This is pretty basic. F, turn the flashlight on and off. Yes, I figured that out. That's easy part. Okay, left mouse button. Open the doors and close the doors. Open, close the windows. Reset modem, reset breaker. Enter computer mode. Yep, I'm familiar with that too. Okay, the next one, right mouse button, lock and unlock windows. I think that's the part I totally missed. So that's why I've been getting killed uh, in the last two videos of this game. And also leave computer mode, we knew that one. Okay, so now it explains what everything does, so let's check all this out. Report system, reports are found in the report desk application on your desktop. Okay. Opening in the report desk app will show you three icons. Yup. Shredder used to discard false reports by dragging and dropping the paper report icon middle on the top of the shredder icon. Okay, so if it's a false report, I can just shred it. I don't know, I'm trying to figure out how I would know if it's a report is false or not. Probably because maybe I can't find any information on the guy, maybe, I don't know. Okay, report, drag and drop into your desktop to open the report, we knew that. Fax, used to file correct reports, ID and evidence must be attached to correctly process the report. Makes sense. After dragging the middle paper report into icon into your desktop, you will see a description and some details about the suspect. Your high, the height and weight fields are an estimation and actual figures can be above or below the estimated values. Yep, I think I've seen that too. Okay. Um, okay, here's a report example. The first step is to find ID of the person in question. This is done by using DMVDB app. Yep, that's what I've been doing actually. Okay, so let's read this real quick. My cat has been missing for a few days, so I hung up posters all over the street. During that time, I ran into Mrs. Johns, Jones, who told me that she had not seen my little John for quite some time, either even though he used to play in her garden all the time. Tonight, I woke up to a defanging meow that sounded like my little John. Something about Mr. Mrs. Johns. Jones feels off lately as if she has a dark arrow or something. I saw her paint painting. They are all red, almost like blood. She is obsessed with that color. I know she moved in only a month ago, but could you please investigate this? Okay, sounds like she might be killing some cats or something. Uh, okay, first step is to find the ID of the person in question. After opening the app, you'll have to fill in the information you know from the report to find the ID of said person. Got it. Yes, we will be doing that too. Okay, click search when finished and a list of potential matches will be displayed. Okay, that's familiar as well. In this case, name of suspect Dahlia Jones is known so we can click the name and an ID card will spawn. Okay, yep, we knew the name. So we just found her by the name and we found this ID card and then you can just draw, uh, drag that ID card into identification card slot. Yep, just like this. We knew that as well. Okay, the next step is to search through the various other apps to find information on the suspect and fill the evidence quota. Social Spy is used to check all social media posts the person has made. Not all people have social posts. I agree as well. I've seen that too. After opening the Social Spy app, you will see two fields where you can enter the name alias of the suspect. In this case, the suspect doesn't have an alias, so we can type in the name. Okay, after clicking search if the person has a social profile with a given name, it will be displayed. And here's the post, her recent post, with pictures attached. All posts can be dragged and dropped into the evidence section of the report if you find them pertinent. DebitDB 
is used to search the previous transaction of the person in question. Okay, let's see what she got here. While you might have gone physically, you live on throughout art. Be it what it may, I consider that greater than average life. Okay, that sounds really fishy. It looks like she's been killing somebody and painting something red, I don't know. After opening the app, you will need to type in the name of the person you plan on searching. After clicking search, a list of transactions will be displayed. Erotica Express Yourself, Steamers Tap House. Click on the result will spawn a receipt showing the items purchased. Handcuffs and a whip. <laughs> okay. Uh, kinky. I love it. If you find this information too pertinent, you can drop and drag and drop the receipt into the evidence section of the report. CMDB is used to search the cell phone of the person you're investigating. After opening the app, you will need to type in the name of the person you want to search. I remember that we've done that too. Okay, click and search will provide you with a IMEI number to use in your rootkit app to gain entry into their device. And the cool thing about this, you can actually, you don't have to type in all the numbers in here in the rootkit. You can actually select this, copy by clicking Control C, and then, you know, selecting this window here in the rootkit and just Control V to paste it. So you don't have to type all the numbers. Here is my tip of the day. All right, after opening the app, you will need the IME number to connect to someone's devices. Once you click connect, a short loading time will pass and then you will need to find the correct frequency to unlock the phone. This is noted by a beep sound notification and done by dragging the slider to the correct position on the line. Okay, I did not know that. I just got lucky maybe in my first night that I just clicked crack and it worked for me. So there are two bars here and I gotta find the beeping sound. Okay. Good to know. If the timer at the top right reaches zero, before you crack the phone, you'll be kicked out of the hack and the rootkit app will be placed on a cooldown. Okay, we've seen that as well. When you're sure you found the correct crack position, click crack button. If correct, the phone will appear. Okay, we've seen that as well. Excuse me, drinking water. Good stuff. Okay, click in one of three sections. Search history, pictures, or text canvas will show a list of information. You can click and drag any piece of potential evidence from here into the report if you find it pertinent. Uh, yes, okay. Records is used to find old police report on a suspect. See, I haven't found the use of this yet. I'm sure I will after night one, maybe. After opening records, you will need a name to search. I remember her. In this case, the suspect has no police report. If the suspect does have a police report and it contains pertinent information, you can drag and drop it into the evidence section. Oh, I see. If it's related to the crime they were talking about, you can use it as the evidence. Good to know. Once you added an ID and met the evidence quota, the report is ready to be filed. Click X at the top right on the report to return it to the report desk. Then drag and drop the white paper report into the fax icon to submit the report. Mm -hmm. We've done that. If you're unable to find evidence of a crime and believe that report is false, you can shred the report instead. Let's read this again. If you are unable to find evidence of a crime and believe that report is false, you can shred the report instead. Good to know. Okay, if you can find any evidence, it's probably false. Just drag and drop the report icon to the left of the shredder, onto the shredder. Only link evidence to reports that are pertinent, pertinent to what you found. Attaching evidence that is not related will cause the report to be rejected. Attaching evidence that is not related will cause the report to be rejected. I see. Yeah, that's probably a really important right here. Because I made that mistake, I think. 
From here your goal is to meet the daily quota of reports submitted each day as noted by the today's report quota icon on your toolbar. Okay, the gray one, your daily quota of reports is reflected in this icon. Your daily quota of reports, okay. Rejected reports quota. Whenever you submit report correctly or incorrectly, they will add it to your today's report quota. Reports that are incorrectly filed will add to your rejected reports quota. Okay, <laughs> I've seen those too. Bonus report icon. Once you have fulfilled the today's report quota, any extra reports filed will not count to future day quotas, but rather towards your today's bonus, go to bed early quotas for the current day. Correctly filing more reports will add to the today's bonus quota and when full will reward you with dust coin. This quota can be reached multiple times in a single day. Okay, so I'm wondering, do I have like a time limit I have to go to bed? I don't know. I don't know that yet. I'm still questioning this. Go to bed early quota icon. Filing reports correctly or incorrectly will add to the go-to-bed early quota and when fulfilled, the day will end automatically. Okay. We want, we want blue to be 6 out of 6. Network connection icon. Your internet connection is noted by the network connection icon at the top left of the toolbar. The green, your computer is connected. The red is disconnected from the internet. Note, an internet connection is required to use the searching tools on your PC. To reconnect to the internet, you'll have to reset your wireless router. Reset it and wait for the lights to all turn green before returning to your PC. Okay, we've seen that, we've done it. Dustcoin icon. Dustcoin is currency used to purchase upgrades. Your Dustcoin balance is at the top left of the toolbar. You can earn dust coin two ways fulfilling today's bonus quota successfully reaching the next day after meeting the quota the amount is based on the amount of reports you submitted correctly instant rootkit cracks used to bypass the normal cracking process in the rootkit app okay so i can still crack it if I, this is zero just have to do it manually upgrades to open upgrades menu click on the upgrades icon the menu will appear showing available upgrades. Instant social search. Does that mean you don't have to wait or something, right? Boom, and it's done. Instant debit search, instant police search, instant I I I M E I search, instant root kill crack. Okay. I like that this is cheap. All instant searches are one-time purchases and infinite use. They will provide a one-click search to find the information related to that app. For instance, instant debit search will skip the searching process and display the list of transactions immediately after clicking. A report with four, all four instant searches, search upgrades unlocked. A report with all four instant search upgrades unlocked. The instant search option will not appear until ID is dragged and drop into the report. Okay. Instant rootkit crack will provide a one-time instant cell phone crack once the IMEI number is inputted into the rootkit app. See, in this situation there's only one bar here, so these things will probably get a lot harder. So we're probably going to need to use rootkit cracks um, later on in the game. Your available instant rootkit cracks are shown at the top left of the toolbar. Other apps, SecCams is your app to check the cameras around the outside of the house. After opening the app, you can navigate the cameras by using your arrow keys left and right to switch cameras down to exit and space bar to activate the camera light. Okay, so I think the main point I got from this is I need to lock all the door, all the windows with the right mouse click. And I had a comment earlier somewhere 
that somebody said that I really need to look at these lights to the camera too, like maybe the first thing, and just shine the light on uh, somebody if I see somebody. I haven't seen anybody yet, but I'll probably just need to do this a little bit more often. And I think the guy in the house it gets to me first before I can do anything because the windows are still are unlocked. Okay, so I'm gonna make this just a video for this how to, you know, play this game. And I'm going to record night one and hopefully we can complete it finally. All right, thanks a lot for everybody who's been watching these videos, who've been subscribing to my channel. I play games like this uh, all the time, mostly first person horror games, adventure games. Um, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you. See you next video.